commercial aviation is bustling like never before, with over 5,000 airlines crisscrossing the skies and catering to myriad market niches. Yet, amid the diverse business strategies, one segment remains relatively uncharted – long-haul, low-cost travel. Penetrating this market has been a challenge, often seen as the ultimate test in aviation. Nonetheless, one airline has daringly ventured into this territory and managed to carve out its niche. The question arises, who is this trailblazer and how have they succeeded where others hesitated? Diving deeper, the surge in low-cost travel's popularity is evident. Recent data highlights that 36% of all flights today are serviced by budget airlines. Industry giants like Southwest, Ryanair and Indigo flew a combined total of over 200 million passengers in 2021 alone. But here's the twist. The majority of these cost-effective journeys are short-haul. The rarity of long-haul budget flights seems paradoxical in our increasingly globalised era, where the allure of distant horizons beckons stronger than ever. What's holding back the emergence of such flights? In essence, the business model for long-haul, low-cost flights is rife with challenges. Delving into the myriad reasons, let's spotlight the three predominant hurdles. Firstly, fuel costs play a substantial role. As flight distance increases, fuel consumption grows almost exponentially, rendering long-haul flights notably cost-intensive. Consequently, to achieve profitability on such extensive journeys, airlines are compelled to levy higher fares, a move contradicting the ethos of the budget airline model. Next, we grapple with the expenditures tied to long-range aircraft. Extended flights necessitate larger planes, and these behemoths come with a hefty price tag. Take the 787-9, the global favourite among wide-body jets. Its cost towers nearly threefold over the A320neo, the top pick among narrow-body aircraft. Amplifying this financial strain, the maintenance and repair of wide-body jets not only are pricier, but also time-consuming. This extended downtime translates to lost revenue opportunities. Lastly, the human resource factor weighs in. Larger aircraft demand more hands on deck and in an era grappling with a palpable labour shortfall, recruiting pilots and cabin staff has become a premium affair. Additionally, the wear and tear of traversing multiple time zones on long-haul flights means crews require extended rest periods, as mandated by aviation regulators. This requirement muddies the waters of crew rostering and nudges airlines to recruit additional staff, further inflating operational costs. The intricacies and costs associated with long-haul travel have, for a long time, deterred many from its pursuit. While low-cost carriers, notably WOW and Norwegian, attempted to break these financial barriers, their efforts unfortunately fell short. However, where many saw cautionary tales, French B saw an opportunity. This Parisian airline ventured into the world of long-haul, low-cost travel with gusto. Notwithstanding an average sector length exceeding 8,000 kilometres, their fares often undercut traditional full-service carriers by half. After seven years in the skies, French B's trajectory isn't just about survival. They've consistently managed to turn profits. Diving into French B's strategy reveals a nuanced approach. Central to their success is their commitment to fleet commonality. By solely operating one type of aircraft, they've managed to optimise efficiencies across the board, particularly in maintenance and crew training. These efficiencies translate into significant cost savings, which in turn can be passed on to travellers. But French B's embrace of fleet commonality isn't generic. They've placed their bets on the Airbus A350, a choice that distinguishes them from their counterparts. As one of the most technologically advanced and fuel-efficient planes today, the A350 provides French B with substantial fuel savings estimated at about 25% when juxtaposed with other aircraft. Adding to its appeal is the relatively young age of French B's A350 fleet, with planes averaging a mere four years. This youth minimises maintenance demands. However, as they age, the embedded predictive maintenance capabilities of the A350 will play a pivotal role, enabling quicker repairs and cost containment. 
This strategic blend of aircraft choice and operational methodology underpins French B's success in an arena previously deemed too challenging. Another significant factor in French B's success is the strategic simplicity of its route network. Predominantly centered in Paris, almost all their flights either start or end in the city. This centralization means all their pilots and crew are stationed at one primary location, affording the airline unparalleled flexibility in crew scheduling. Furthermore, their destination choices are astute. They don't just pick random cities. They cater to major tourist hubs like New York and Los Angeles, as well as sought-after vacation spots such as Punta Cana and Tahiti, ensuring consistent and predictable passenger traffic. In a savvy, cost-saving move, they opt for secondary airports over primary ones. For instance, instead of the bustling Charles de Gaulle, their Parisian base is at Orly Airport. Similarly, in New York, they chose Newark over the more expensive JFK. Such decisions help them maintain a competitive edge by minimizing operational costs. French B's distinct cabin configuration serves as a crucial element in its success formula. While the Airbus A350 is conventionally designed to accommodate nine passengers per row in its economy class, French B optimizes its layout to seat 10. This innovative approach allows them to house 411 passengers on their A350 900s and an impressive 480 on their A350 1000s. For context, Qatar Airways, the A350's launch customer, seats only 283 and 327 passengers on these respective models. Even their low-cost rival, North Atlantic, accommodates just 338 passengers on their similarly sized Boeing 787s. With the advantage of higher seating capacity, French B can spread its operational costs across a larger passenger base. This not only brings down their average fare cost, but also positions them to offer incredibly competitive prices, sometimes as low as $199 one way, all while maintaining a robust profit margin. Navigating the complex world of airline seating, French B's high-density configuration stands out as an essential cornerstone of its success. However, this approach has not been without its detractors. As the global populace becomes more size conscious, there's a growing distaste for shrinking airline seats. If passengers become more aware of French B's 10 across seating, it might jeopardize customer satisfaction and ultimately dent demand. The fallout could be severe for the airline, provided that passengers discern a significant difference between a 9 and 10 seat arrangement. Interestingly, French B's seats measure approximately 16.5 inches in width, just half an inch slimmer than the seating on 777s and 787s operated by mainstream airlines. While seasoned travelers might detect this slight disparity, most passengers would find the distinction negligible. The seats also offer a commendable 32 inches of legroom and are replete with modern conveniences. A four inch recline, universal power outlets, USB ports, and a robust in-flight entertainment system brimming with multimedia content. Coupled with their affordability, these features present a balanced trade-off for passengers. The aviation sector brims with diverse business strategies, each tailored to tap into specific market segments. Amidst this vast expanse, the long-haul low-cost domain had remained relatively unexplored until French B's entrance demonstrating that it's not just feasible, but can also yield substantial profits, French B maintains its competitive edge through strategic choices like adopting fuel-efficient planes, simplifying operations, and maximizing seating capacity. Their ability to profit genuine low-cost rates while remaining profitable exemplifies the essence of innovation. French B's ascendancy underscores the ever-evolving nature of business, asserting that in the entrepreneurial realm, nothing is truly set in stone.